There was a woman that left a comment under my three things she's feeling when she ignores your video and what to do instead. And one of the things I said in that video was that you need to let women experience your absence. Like absence makes the heart grow fonder, but more importantly, it gives a woman the idea that she's choosing to be with you versus feeling forced. So that woman said, I'm a woman and what you're saying is incorrect. Everything in excess is inappropriate, but women do not fall in love with a man's absence. We take it as you're talking to other women or that you are not that into us. Watch it, guys, with this kind of advice. So I did a whole video responding to that where I basically said, in short, that for one, the thing she said about talk uh, women thinking you're talking to other women is not actually deterrent. If anything, it makes women realize, oh, other women are choosing him. I need to go after him. But more to the point, the part about being absent, I said, you know what? In my dating experience, I found that when I'm a bit more patient and not around as much in the beginning, that women typically tend to be attracted to me faster and fall in love with me a lot faster. Now, with that said, I said at the end of that video, but hey, I could be tripping. So guys, leave me your comments down below and let me know what your experience is where you tried to date a woman and you left her alone, you waited between dates to call her, you whatever, and, and let me know what the results were, good or bad, I'm not biased, I could be wrong, but let me know what your, what your comments says. And man, some of you guys left some amazing comments. So I'm gonna read through these real quick. And so here's a comment somebody left. Somebody said, listen to Harry boys. He knows exactly what he is talking about. I had a comment from a woman and a woman left a comment and said, what you're saying makes total sense, especially the part about burning out with too much, too, too fast. That's what's happening to me currently. And I can confirm that it makes me want to cut it off completely, not just slow down. So what I tell you guys, like she's saying, there's a guy right now that's calling her all the time, texting her all the time, trying to see her nonstop. And it's starting to cause burnout to where the point where she wants to cut him off. Now, she doesn't say she's done it yet. But when women get to the point where they start feeling like they want to cut you off, they're not going to cut you off completely. Like I said before, women are like uh, light dial switches where it's like they don't. It's not like we're like light switches. We flip on and off where women kind of like dial up from dim to medium to like highlight, right? And so when women start feeling like they want to cut you off, they're not going to just go, boop. What they're going to do is they're going to start to either, they're going to start to do the slow fade. And the reason they're doing a slow fade is because even though they're thinking that they want to get rid of you, they're not completely sure that that's what it is yet. And there's still some level of feeling there for you. So what they're actually doing subconsciously is they're hoping to reset this thing to where you start doing the right things that are going to make her want to come to you. Because if she's chasing you, she can't be replacing you. But when you as a guy are doing too much, you are in effect chasing her, which is actually pushing her away. And so what they'll do is they'll start giving one or two word answers to text, or they'll start being flimsy with saying yes to dates. I got to go from like saying an absolute yes to like maybe, and you don't want to be in maybe land because maybe is pretty much a no, right? But they're doing a slow fade because their body and their brain needs time away from you. And women don't know how to ask for that without it sounding stupid. Like if they were to say out loud to you, hey guy, so I'm really like getting to know you, but I need to actually see you a bit less in order to be more attracted to you. Like you hearing that from me saying it, it sounds stupid out loud. And yet that's exactly what women need. Women need time away from you to reminisce about dates with you, to think about you. And more importantly, to get that feeling of, I want to see him again. Let me reach out to him. It needs to be their choice, all right? And so that's why it's good to give women time between dates to miss you because that gives them that feeling that they need to want to see you again and desire you and anticipate you. So then she goes on to say, the woman who made the comment may be used to F boys that ghost when they lose interest or move on to the next. It's really difficult to go from that to dating real men because all your trust and hope has been eroded by boys who use and discard you. So while the space you recommend is healthy, it might trigger a hurt woman and cause her to shut down to the connection. And so this is actually a great example of what I've talked about, where I say that as you start to do some of the things that I'm talking about, there are going to be women that get chased away or are disgusted by it or like, oh, my God, you're playing games. And to her point, those women are usually the ones that are hurt or wounded. And I say this because, look, I've dated plenty of women before, right? I have found, for example, I'm an introvert, right? I need my alone time. I have found the women who are most hurt by the idea of me needing alone time are the ones who didn't get enough hugs as a kid or were constantly pushed away by their parents. And so they're now needy of affection at all times as a way of being able to prove to themselves that somebody wants them. And that's all great. And hey, 
They may find that guy that shows them all the neediness in the world, but that is not a healthy woman that has a healthy brain or a healthy dynamic in her head about what's going to make relationships work. So at the point that I found women that need all of my time or get stressed out when I don't text them back right away, I found those women have been the most difficult to date and have been the ones that had a lot of trauma. So in effect, you giving space to a woman is actually a great way to test if she is a woman that has a good head on her shoulders or if she's been through so much that she's damaged goods. And I do not want you dating damaged goods. You can feel sorry for and empathize with women that are damaged goods. But just like I say to you guys, it doesn't matter like what your sob story is because all women care about is have you done the work? I say the same to you. You can feel bad for a woman, but if she has not done the work to get herself in a healthy place where she can have go into a relationship with a healthy viewpoint, that is not on you to solve that. We're not in the, the, I'm not in the habit of trying to teach you guys to wear capes and be superheroes. So if you do these things, we're like, you know, if you, for example, wait four days between a date to call a woman and you hit her up on that fourth date to uh, ask her for a date and her response is, huh, you didn't talk to me for four or five days and how could you blah, 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 you're just playing games. Guess what? You sniffed out a woman that was going to be a bad woman to date. So you actually did the right thing by her having the wrong response, all right? So just because you do things that turn women away by doing the right things, that doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong. It means you're pushing away the women that would have been bad for you in the long term, all right? So I'm glad this woman pointed that out. So then I had another comment, and this guy said, recently I had a second date. I asked her out sometime over this past weekend, and she said yes, and so after he asked her out, he said, I cut contact, meaning he stopped reaching out. She reached out to me the day before the date, asking if we were still hanging out. Of course, I said yes. Not going to lie, it was a pretty decent date. So I tell you guys quite frequently that at the point that you set a date, ideally you're setting a date to where it's going to happen like the next day or the day after, so it's not too far along. But I've literally set up dates where I set the date up, and then I'll wait like a week. And then turn up the day before the date, girl hits me up. Hey, Harry, just want to make sure we're still on. And my, my, my spouse is always like, to her, her, I'll say, yes, the date's on. In my head, I'm like, I'm the one that set up the date. Why would I forget about the date that I set up? And, and I'm a guy trying to bang a hot woman. How would I avoid the chance to do that? Like, But the point is, women will do that because they're the ones that are in the habit of just canceling on guys when they're not feeling him, but don't want to say that to his face. So that's why they're going to be the ones that end up reaching out because they have a bad history of doing that themselves, thinking that guys are the same. I'm like, I'll go on a date with a girl that I don't think I have a shot with if it means we can at least, you know, make out for a little bit, you know, or at least the, the past version of me did. So suffice to say, but the point is, he's pointing out again, what do you do? He said a date, left her alone. He used the, the tactic of being absent for a little bit. And what happened? She came after him to make sure that she was going to still be validated by him wanting to do the date. And then they had the date. So again, now to be fair, there was a guy that left this comment. He said, my own experience uh, is answered, uh, answered uh, and an adult. I can't say the words. His, this is his own experience, but every time I create absence, not a single time has it worked and she gained or, and she gained more interest. In fact, every time I slowed the text to have her initiate, she stops. Now, somebody responded to that and said, you have to be desirable in the first place for that to work. If she doesn't like you, then your absence will have no effect on her. Well, that is partially true. That, that, that is very true. But I want to go a step further because his comment doesn't give us any other intel. But like he says, every time I slowed the text to have her initiate, she stops. But that doesn't tell me if that means that in the beginning, he was already texting excessively because it's very hard to go from your texting nonstop so suddenly you're slowing it down. That looks suspicious to women because now you're not being consistent in your activities. But more to the point, if he was texting a lot in the beginning, at the point where he says, okay, it's time for me to slow down, she may have already been annoyed so much at him texting so much that she might have already been turned off to where when he finally realizes, oh, wait, I should probably slow this down, you're now, she's already turned off, so now it's not going to help. So as a general blanket rule for guys, I typically say that your texting should not be all that much in the beginning. But what does that mean? Well, a lot of guys in the beginning, they're sending long form paragraph texts and they're sending back to back texts versus sending a text and then waiting for her to send a text next. So if in the beginning you're a guy that was sending long paragraph texts and you were sending three or four at a time, then yeah, it's going to be hard to recover from that. You as a guy should be sending texts that are no more than like three to five lines because on a, on a phone, three to five lines is already a lot of text, but you're trying to send like, you know, a text that's like three or four sentences. That's like 
15 to 18 lines. A woman's screen is going to look like this. It's going to be all your words. And psychologically, to a woman, that looks like you're saying so much because you need her attention because you're desperate for it. You're not trying to give that off as a guy, but that's what it's looking screen to a woman. So this is why in the beginning, you, you only, you're you texting, you wait for her to respond back. She responds with something. Then you, you respond back with a text of your own and a question back and forth until at some point you ask for a date or you hear her say, oh, we should meet up some time. But either way, like when you're doing that, you're still not texting a whole lot. You're texting just enough to see if she warrants going out on a date with. But you're not trying to use texting in the beginning to build rapport, to be overly flirty. You're saving all that stuff for in person where it's going to be more effective, all right? And then lastly, there was a guy that uh, commented also, but he, he was going through a situation. So he had asked me a question. He had said, would you ever recommend a call after four or five days or stick with the text? So what he's asking is, you know, after you wait that four or five days, when you're going to hit her up for a date, for that second or third date, do you text her or do you call her? Now, admittedly, I'm 42. I'm old school. I am all for phone calls. But I, I found, you know, as an older gentleman, I've been able to date women that are in their 20s and the same tactic, phone call. And here's the thing. I do phone calls because the fact that I, I'm very much aware that texting is the thing that everybody does today. That's the point of the phone call is because you are going to stand out from 97% of the other bozos in her DMs and in her texting stream that are all about texting and texting and texting. And also, as I've said before, I'm not in the habit of wanting to leave evidence of me saying things that in hindsight can make me look like I was simping or trying to be too needy of her attention. So if I do a phone call, she can pick up, she can hear my voice. Vocal inflections are, people don't put enough emphasis on how important vocal inflections are to attraction. Like when women hear the tonality of your voice and how smooth it is when it's coming out and the words you're saying, that's an added bonus to her being more attracted to you than just reading some digital text. And it's the kind of digital text that everybody sends and digital texts do not change. You know, it does change vocal term, tone, how one guy sounds versus how you sound are gonna be different. And your tonality of your voice could be doing all the things, but you wanna stick to text, not gonna help. So I say, it's not that you can't get a date if you text her back and say, hey, let's go on a date. I'm just saying, one, the tonality of your voice is helpful. Also, the boldness to call her up and risk her not picking up and risk her rejecting you by voice to make that call. Just that action, women are gonna be like, oh, he he's a he has no no uh, fear at all about trying to ask me out and to actually you know hear me as a woman and he's not gonna be afraid if I say no to him because he's a he's a guy he's a man's man so I stick to phone calls but again you could do texting I just said phone calls so I told him I found phone calls work well then somebody else said if you don't know what to do no contact is always the correct answer if she likes you she will eventually reach out if she doesn't she didn't like you enough to reach out. Her actions or inaction will tell you everything you need to know. Now, I've said that, you know, if you wait four or five days to con to initiate a text or a call to a woman for that next date, I have found waiting that long, a woman that's starting to build interest in you will reach out to you and say, hey, hi, as a way of letting you know, hey, I'm still around. You should like totally ask me out. At the point that they reach out, yes, you still want to, you they want to go into asking them for a date, whether it's like the next day or like further into the future. The point is women reaching out to you, they're really going to be like, hey, I had a great time. Let's go out again. They're going to reach out with a little, hi, what's up? Hey, or I'm sending you a meme that's so funny. Ha ha ha. Any contact a woman reaches out to you with, it's code for, I'm still around, ask me on a date. At which point you just say, ha, that's such a funny meme. Or, oh, I'm doing great, blah, 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 blah. Hey, random question. Are you free this day or this day? So forth and so forth, right? So anyway, but that not, that's not what the guy was asking. So then the guy, the original guy responded back to that and said, I was referring about the time taken in between dates. And then he says this, I ended up calling her and setting up the second date after four days of not reaching out to her. And she said, yes. So what have we learned from all this? Is that this woman said that being absent is not going to work. And I would never fall for that, blah, 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 blah. And yet, as we can see from these responses, it works pretty darn well. Now, in follow-up to that, there was another person that left an interesting comment. Oh, and he said, uh, women will always lie to hide their true nature if they are even aware of their own nature. So this is in, this is in reference to the fact that this woman is saying that being absent 
is not going to attract her. And yet I've just proven that from these comments and my own experience that that is a lie. But why would women do that? And so this is where we get into it's important to note that I, I've said on the show before that you shouldn't really go to women and ask other women how to attract other women because they're going to tell you all the things that are incorrect, right? They're going to tell you the things that sound good on paper, like, oh, you should get her flowers. You should tell her how you feel. And the reality is this, is that I don't know if you guys have heard like the dark triad or like the things like narcissism, perfectionism, um, all these other things that are like, that are negative tier things that actually can attract women, but it can also be to their detriment if guys use those things in the wrong way. And so the reason that women can't tell you the true things of what's going to attract them is because if you're the kind of guy that's going to use that to manipulate women or to be narcissistic towards them or to use that against them in some kind of harmful fashion, then that's going to be to their detriment. So for example, right, I tell you guys, there is nothing wrong with waiting four to five days in between dates to contact a woman or to only ask her out once a week and to have times where she doesn't see you. Like to be patient because that's going to build up her attraction, right? Now, that is a very true thing that, again, I have personally done and I've taught others to do and it has worked. But women cannot tell you, hey, after that first date, you should like totally not call this, this girl that you like or not send her flowers this net because... If they say that to you, that's tapping into, if you're the guy that's going to misuse that, then you being absent could be that you're seeing other women or that you are, you know, using her for her money or doing some other thing that's going to bring harm to her. And so it doesn't sound right to a woman to say to you as a guy, hey, do these various things. Don't call her. If she argues with you, just walk away or like ignore her. Like saying those kind of things, for one, they sound mean coming out of anybody's mouth, including mine. But also to the point is that even though those things do work, a woman saying that is basically telling you to, in her head, be mean to this girl. And that then means if she says that to you, then other guys might be getting that same advice and do that to her. And it's not now in her benefit for a guy to be told to ignore her, even though it does work. All right. So just be mindful, guys, that women are going to give you advice that to them sounds like it should be helpful and it should work. And they're not going to tell you some of the deeper, darker things that actually work. I try to tell you guys those things because I don't want you to be like an evil guy, but I want you to know that, you know, me telling you, if you do this certain action, a woman's going to feel this thing. It's not for you to then treat women badly. It's for you to know that you're not doing anything more than, for example, being patient. You're just, you're taking her on a date for a good time and then just leaning back for a bit. And that alone is going to be enough for her to sit there for a few days and wonder, oh, is he going to call me again? I really liked him. Why isn't he talking to me? Those might seem like bad things. You're not doing anything but just being patient. And she's going to go through that. But you knowing that she's going to go through that is not a bad thing. It's, it's good for you to know that that's a way that she's going, to, she's going to need to feel those things in order to build attraction to you. All right. And so that's some stuff that I can say because I know that it works. But you're never going to hear that from women, at least women that are, you know, not trying to dive deep into that kind of stuff, you know? So suffice to say, guys, that's why as well-meaning as this woman is about saying you, women do not fall in love with a, with a man's absence. The number of guys that could prove her wrong, I could be doing videos like this all day and for the rest of my entire career doing this, you know? But just know, guys, that it does work. And if women tell you it doesn't work, just be like, oh, yeah, it doesn't work. Because every woman's going to say, all, all women are the same, that they all think they're different. They're all going to say, no, uh, not contacting a girl is not going to work. No, uh, you being uh, cocky and, and a bit rude to her is not going to work. Fine. Let them believe that because they need to have their fantasy of what works and what doesn't. Because for them, it's all about romance and what feels good and all this other stuff. And you as a guy just need to know that these things work. All right. So just wanted to put some some my two cents out there on that. You's a bad boy, but you can't stop. Won't stop. Let's you are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high class man. You are high class man. You are high.